The Trumpet Daily Update from Jerusalem. Hello again, this is Stephen Fleury reporting from Jerusalem. Reuters recently posted an article saying that it may take tens of thousands of troops to secure serious stockpiles of chemical weapons. It quoted one U.S. official who said there were possibly dozens of chemical and biological weapon sites scattered around Syria. Everyone knows, it seems, that Syria has a deadly arsenal of chemical weapons, but almost no one is curious about how Syria managed to obtain these weapons. Back in 2003, you might recall that after American troops failed to locate Saddam's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, the mainstream media just had a field day with that. Yet prior to that time, all of the experts, the security officials, the UN inspectors, the, even the media elites, they were in unanimous agreement here that Saddam had the weapons of mass destruction, that he had used them several times in fact, and he had the means to continue building more. But the left-wing media didn't seem to care about Saddam's brutal track record. All that mattered was that a Republican president got it all wrong, supposedly. And yet, not long after that, we read about a massive chemical weapons attack that was just narrowly averted in, of all places, the little nation of Jordan. And, and despite the large-scale nature of this would-be attack, media coverage was scant. At the time, Jordanian authorities, this was in 2004, they said that the weapons came from Syria. Now, at that same time, the Trumpet.com took it a step farther. My, my father asked in an article back in 2004, have some of Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction been found in Jordan? There had been, after all, several reports in 2003 of significant truck movement between Iraq and Syria just prior to the U.S. invasion. Additional evidence from seized Iraqi documents during the war indicated that Iraq received assistance from Russia in transporting weapons and missile components across the border to Syria. Even one of Saddam's former generals said that he was absolutely certain weapons of mass destruction were transferred to Syria just before the war started in 2003. Now today, with Syria engulfed in civil war, and Bashar Assad's regime teetering in the balance, there is an understandable degree of panic about what might happen to Syria's chemical weapons in the event of a regime change. Hardly anyone, though, has bothered to ask about how Syria managed to acquire such a massive stockpile of chemical weapons in the first place. Syria's short-lived nuclear weapons program was obliterated by an Israeli airstrike in 2007, it hasn't used WMDs on its own people, like Saddam did, and it certainly hasn't had the reputation for being a large-scale manufacturer of weapons of mass destruction, not like Iraq anyway, before 2003. And yet last month, when Assad's government acknowledged that it possessed deadly, deadly weapons, a deadly arsenal of WMDs, no one doubted that claim. There were no intelligence reports theorizing that Syria had suspended its WMD program years ago or saying that the stockpile simply didn't exist. Everyone knows they exist, but no one asks how they got there. Because raising that question would expose the media's shameful record of bias and deception. This is Stephen Flurry reporting from Jerusalem.